Um, but let's go to a uh, skincare routine because something else that we wanted to look at wasn't just familiarity with CBD as a skincare ingredient or whether people had used it, but are there differences just overall in how consumers and non-consumers approach their skincare? So, you know, to your point, is it just that cannabis consumers are more aware of CBD or, or is it there is a difference in the way they're taking care of their skin or whether they're taking care of their skin that could translate into marketing opportunities. And indeed, we are seeing that cannabis consumers are more likely to have a skincare routine. So 49% to 44%. Um, they're more likely to spend more on skincare and they're more likely to buy more products. So they're out there, they're looking at what's new, they're they're trying a bunch of different things. Um, so why do you think this is? I mean, what do you think it is about cannabis consumers that would also lead them to be different in this type of behavior? That's, that's actually a really good question. Um, I think that cannabis consumers don't need to be convinced of the therapeutic benefit of cannabinoids. I mean, they know from experience that they that they do something, and in, and in the case of euphoria, I mean, it's 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 unmistakable that that that's an uh, that's an effect, and so I think they're already convinced. They don't need to be sold, really, on the power of another hero ingredient that's found in some remote part of the world. They 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 believe that cannabinoids do something, and it's more. I think the opportunity for marketers is to talk about how these. Uh, how these ingredients can, or talk about the the efficacy of these ingredients and the clinical benefit, instead of just talking about the fact that we feature CBD as a hero ingredient, and um, and with many brand, brands, in fact, don't just feature CBD as the hero ingredient, but don't talk a lot about the efficacy. And I think that's the that's a big opportunity. And so for for cannabis consumers, I think they're they're already. Um, they already understand that there's potential here and are much more willing to uh, to invest in trying products that uh, that they think might benefit themselves. Yeah, and, and, and I agree. I mean, I think consumers are, um, from at least what we discovered through our survey, they, they appear to be a much more sophisticated, obviously open-minded, um, trendy um, type of consumer um, looking out for probably not just for their own wellness, um, but willingness to spend um, on their wellness in general. So it's definitely been very interesting to see these sort of outcomes from our survey and that we are dealing with a savvy um, demographic, um, which then also pretends a lot of um, great marketing opportunities, right, in terms of converting this uh, demographic to more um, CBD or cannabinoid-based beauty and wellness products, um, and also just highlights too, right, in terms of the non-consumer uh, market, what is it that um, it kind of keeps them back a little bit? Is it the price point? Is it just education and awareness? And I think we have to do a little bit more research and study um, in terms of how to reach this particular demographic. Well, the point you bring up about wellness is really interesting, right? Because cannabis, of course, is a wellness tool uh, for many, many people. And it's also a medicine for many people that is not covered by insurance. So this idea of being willing to spend or being willing to take a more expensive route to wellness because you believe it's better for you could definitely kind of weave its way into other types of wellness activities, right? So whether people are willing to buy, you know, to work out equipment or whether they're willing to buy organic food, you know, kind of these extra spends because we see from the survey that consumers and non-consumers do not significantly differ on income. So it's not that consumers are making a bunch more money than non-consumers. It's the way they're choosing to spend their money and choosing to spend your money on cannabis for a lot of people is a wellness decision and a wellness expense, as would be choosing to spend money on skincare. Um, so I think that that it really does make sense that this is kind of in the same universe for consumers.